Welcome everybody to Craft Chocolate TV. I am Dylan Butterbaugh, your host for today's episode on tempering. And this is probably my least favorite part of the whole process. Uh, but before we get into that, we're gonna explain what this bean is really made of. This cacao seed is half cocoa butter and half cocoa powder, roughly. Now, depending on where in the world this grows, the cocoa butter content will fluctuate. But what that looks like is this and this. Once cocoa butter gets hot above body temperature, it turns into this. So this is really what we're working with when we temper. Uh, cocoa butter is made of six crystals. And so this is, I like to think of them as Lego blocks. And when you start to cool the chocolate, the cocoa butter begins to line up into, the, uh, into a grid, kind of like steel. Steel gets tempered, glass gets tempered. We have to do that with the chocolate. This cocoa powder happens to be there, but cocoa butter is really what we're working with. Cocoa butter is the melt in your mouth. Cocoa powder is the flavor. Cocoa butter carries that flavor throughout the chocolate, and we need to structure this so it doesn't taste chalky, so that the flavors are all even. And so this is often, you'll see somebody uh, dump chocolate on a marble counter, maybe a chocolatier or a pastry chef. They're gonna spread it around, move it around, and what they're doing is they're using the counter, whether it's stainless steel, marble, granite, to drop that temperature of the chocolate so that the crystals, the Lego blocks, start getting closer and closer and closer to the point where we literally get them to click together. And the temperatures we normally use in Fahrenheit are, we have to cool it off to about 84, 83 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we have to raise it back up to 89 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's when everything clicks together. Um, Celsius, that's something like we want to start at 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. We want to cool it off to somewhere around uh, 28, 29, and then raise it up to about 30. And you get all that clicking together action. And that's why your chocolate bar actually breaks, because we clicked all these crystals together. Uh, that's why it melts in your mouth and not your fingers. That's why you see a shiny surface instead of a, a film, which we call bloom. And that's when the cocoa butter, the expensive stuff, rises to the surface whereas all the cocoa powder stays below because oil wants to separate from solids so anytime you see a chocolate bar that's bloomed don't throw it away all you got to do is remelt it and you can watch a youtube video on hand tempering uh, and put it back into to structure so there's various machines we started by hand tempering or using a bowl of ice and uh, a double boiler where we would use the bowl of ice and we'd stick the chocolate on top of another bowl and we would mix it up as fast as we can to start to drop that temperature. Now we've got machines that use heating wires or water to cool it and that will do the tempering and structuring for us. Uh, but the concept remains the same and so this is one of the first machines we purchased that is a continuous tempering machine. We'll take chocolate and we'll put it in this little bowl here and the bowl is hot. 45, 50 degrees. Uh, we actually keep it at 60 to start because all the crystals are spread out and broken. As it goes sucked inside, it begins to cool off through this pipe, through this auger that feeds it back up. It's then warmed briefly and deposited. And so when I click a foot pedal, it'll stop and I can deposit a certain amount of chocolate into each cavity of a mold. Uh, and that, that's how we mold now. We have another machine downstairs in our other factory where we can slide an entire mold and fill five cavities of the chocolate with the right amount of chocolate, take it out, we can run it down a vibrating conveyor line which levels everything off and we can then put it in our refrigerator. And in about 20 minutes, you can see the chocolate begin to contract away from the corners of the mold and separate completely from the middle. And if it's got the right feel and shine on it, we know that it's tempered properly. If it doesn't look right, if it's got a film on it, a uh, moldy look, or if it's got cracking, or if it's got uh, red spots, we know that it's either too hot or too cold in this temperature fluctuation. We can then remelt it and start over. So there's nothing wrong with the chocolate, but we do have to start over and make sure we've structured this correctly. So this is why you have to keep chocolate somewhere around 60 to 70 degrees, or 50 to 70 degrees is very happy. Um, anything over getting close to 80 is way too hot. Uh, and anything kind of below 32 is too cold, you'll start to see this bloom. That's why chocolate can't go in the freezer. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and learned something. 
See you next time.